welcome back to the gaming corner i'm kg and i'm twilight and we are back with more our life beginning and always and we are at step three mm -hmm. last episode we did a uh, dlc late shift and so this episode we're gonna be doing a base game yeah right so um let's see one that we want to do um <coughs> is talks oh sorry you good yeah, I, w I wanted to sneeze really bad. Yeah, no worries. And I sneezed. But I muted myself because, you know, that's just going to be too obnoxious to record. All right. But yeah. All right. Talks. Let's do it. Talks. Another place that summer day was drifting by. Your daydreams were chasing each other, but none sticking around long enough to become, firm a become a firm plan. But you didn't really mind that right now. Tapping work. Ta a tapping worked its way into those dreams focusing more you realized it was coming from your window a grin popped on your face as you thought it had been waiting all day for this moment heading to the window you could see a cove outside his habit of climbing his way really was true a true covism he'd rather scale your house rather than wait a couple extra minutes for you to come down <laughs> you stood aside to give him space you held a hand out to him uh, held a hand out to him. Yep. You offered Cove a hand to help him. Once he, he was mostly inside, he took it to help help steady up last bit of his entrance. He needed the help, despite how many times he's done done this. Hey. Hey, Sheena. Sup? Welcome home. You think my mom should invest on some large, some bigger windows? <clears throat> Cove laughed at that and took look, w one last look at his exclusive entrance. He hummed with a teasing look on his face. Baby. Cove's voice came out quietly with a strange pleased smile on his face. Did something happen? Cove opened his mouth to answer, only to have your phone ringing cut him off. You both turned to where it rested a further up on your bed. It was still face down, so you couldn't tell who was calling. It's okay. Your attention shot back to Cove. He smiled at you awkwardly. Don't worry about it. Go check. It could be important. I'll wait. Thanks. You shuffled forward and scooped the little noise marker into your hand. You flipped it over and checked the caller ID. It's Miranda. You should answer it. I want to say hello. Hi, too. What or not, you accepted the call and said it to the speaker. Hi, Miranda. Hi. Oh wait. Wait, no, it's you. Who's Miranda? Whatever. Miranda? Yeah, you're Miranda. I'm Terry. Oh okay. Oh yeah. Okay. There's something off about her tone. Cove met your gaze, and you saw the same confusion on in his expression. Have you heard from Terry <sighs> <clears throat> at all, or did you hear about her from Cove? Huh? No, she hasn't called me, but Cove is with me right now. Hey. Oh, hi, Cove. Is that what you were going to say? He shook his head no before realizing that it wasn't a good enough answer when one person couldn't actually see it. No. No, Terry hasn't called me today either. Is something wrong? At that, at Miranda couldn't hold herself together any longer. The muffled sobs from the other side of the line were un unmistakable. Terry doesn't like me anymore if she ever did. What? That... that doesn't sound right. You're probably her best friend out of all of us. Yeah, why do you think that? She sniffled and there was a pause as you could hear the, her shift the phone to her other hand. Terry was here the other night watching movies with me. We were up super late. She realized her parents probably went to bed so they couldn't pick her up. My mom and dad are definitely asleep then. Dad works early. Mm. I tried telling her it was okay to just spend the night and she could text her parents what happened, but Terry really didn't want to. You glanced at Cove. He looked equally unsure as you were about this story going. It didn't sound like a friendship ending situation. I suggested things to make it easier if she was nervous, like she could sleep by herself in my room while I was stayed somewhere else. Yeah. <clears throat> 
then I said we didn't have to sleep at all. We couldn't. We could have kept watching movies until one of our parents woke up. I wouldn't have minded. I know not everyone can do sleepovers, but Terry wouldn't even tell me what was really wrong or what I could do to help. I thought we could tell each other anything. I guess I was wrong. Did she stay in the end? No. No. Oh, no. <laughs> we got too loud in the kitchen and my dad woke up. He offered to drive her home when we, when he heard what was wrong. He texted me apologizing for my dad having to do that when he needed rest, but that was it. She isn't talking to me anymore. You could hear every bit of the tears and heartbreak in Miranda's voice. This continued to be the shock of your neighbor. Her butt cold recovered and spoke gently. I'm really sorry. I mean... There's no way Terry would want to, wanted you to make you feel this bad, or that she's just done with your friendship because of this. Miranda sniffled and continued. You hope that she had plenty of tissues handy. It'll be okay. I hope Terry is alright. It's really weird that she reacted like that. It's not a big deal, honestly. You weren't sure what to say. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. Yeah, <laughs> so, I don't know what else to do. Yeah, it'll be okay. It had to be. You couldn't imagine any other any alternative. Miranda's voice sounded a little more collected after finishing her story, but you knew she, that the crying was far from being done. I thought she'd have reached out to one of you by now. Maybe she's not talking to anyone. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for bothering you and Cove about this. Apology accepted. Don't worry about it. Right. Right, you can tell us things. <laughs> Thank you. Her shaky voice finally conveyed a little optimism, or at least a relief that she wasn't dealing with it entirely on her own. Is that all right? If you do hear from her or anything, could you let me know if she's all right? We can. Thanks. Let's talk later, okay? Bye. 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 That didn't really just seem like a especially productive point to end the call, though you also weren't sure where to go from there. Looking to Cove, his face seemed as lost as yours. With no alternative, you hung up and your uh, hung up and put your phone back on your bed. Cove crossed his arms, a frown creasing in his face. He began to pace the length of your room, clearly trying to piece together in his head a way that made sense. You were worried. You felt pretty confident about this working out well. It sounded like trouble to you. You weren't sure how to react. You were worried. Yeah, I would be worried. Yeah, same. Biting the inside of your cheek, you stared at the ground, hearing Miranda so distraught like that was not easy. And what about Terry? The uncertainty was tearing, tearing you up. The empty state of your head before learning this was not helping, helping you now. You couldn't put thought together and flopping back on your bed you stared into space mm. we should probably try call try calling terry cold's voice managed to drag you back to some grounding he stopped pacing but you still saw the perp look on his face yeah i'm worried about her too he bounced up and moved to his side ready to act on whatever plan the two of you come up with cope started with the easiest thing he pulled out his phone and called terry Cove let it ring and ring and ring. Terry didn't answer. There wasn't even a point to leave a voice message. Your shoulders slump and Cove looked even more trouble. If that was possible, if that was possible, he turned to you as if some for some lifeline. Could you try calling? I'm gonna send a text, just like, "Hey, I'm trying to reach you. you tr call me or something." Yeah. You took up your phone once more. Unfortunately, no other, another set of interminable rings. The line was went dead. No answer. No voicemail. Hanging up, you saw Cole visibly deflated. He rubbed his arm. His eyes distant, open, shrugged with the whole affair. <sighs> I don't like this at all. They're fighting. We barely know anything. And we're, what we were supposed to do? Just wait and see. Despite it only being a minute since he texted Terry, Cope checked his phone again. He was desperate for progress, for something and you frowned as you watched him. You need to try to relax. You're making me anxious. There's no way Terry has answered you. They're gonna get over it, you know? 
You stay silent. I'd stay silent. I don't know what to say. I feel like he, would, he needs to try and relax. Like, oh, he needs yeah. to, like... Because it's not going to help if, like, you are on edge of something you don't know. Yep. So, Maybe I feel I like he should... Silent. Hmm? But... <sighs> I feel... Yeah, he needs to... He needs to relax, I feel like. Yeah. Fine. Say, yeah. I wouldn't relax. I would stay silent. <laughs> Just like he needs to relax, honestly, personally. Unless you want to randomize this. (laughs) Unless you want to randomize this. Go. Go for it? Okay. Yeah. What is it? Five? Uh, two. You're making me anxious. Cove stared stared hard at the screen as though he was trying to new a will a new message to will a new message (laughs) to appear. As your words sank in, you formally let his gaze fall to the side. Ko's voice came out in a small quiet that you would have missed it if you haven't already taken your full attention. Sorry. He nodded slowly. Ko's eyes Ko's closed his eyes, letting out a sigh as though he was trying to clear away pressure from the inside of his chest. Glancing at your own phone in vain, you considered te- sending a text message too, if that would even help. This is making you feel all twisted up. You can see some sort of discomfort on Cope's face. There was something consoling in that, at least. Words lifted from his mouth like a feeble breeze. It'll be fine. It's gonna be okay. Yeah. You can hear it in both of your voices how how much you want to give and receive assurance. You tried to believe in the sentiments, weak as they were. I... well... We... we, What do we even say if we hear... Or one from what? you're from one of them. His pacing resumed as he attempted to answer his own question, but it was written all over his face that he had no idea how to tackle any of this. He slowly came to another halt, like a gear winding down. We should try. We should find out Terry's side of the story. We should just comfort Miranda and let up with Terry. I don't know. We should only tell them to work it up, but between our themselves that's it you wondered why you always had to come up with things you didn't say anything i feel uh, like let's we should hear find- terry yeah i know that's what i thought too yeah we, we should-, should find out um terry's side of the story yeah because it's it's not again yeah yeah both sides of stories is like it matters so yeah yeah i know yeah nothing could have have done in could be done until you knew what she thought of this that much was certain cove nodded slightly in agreement for several minutes, both of you remained there in silence, drowning in your thoughts. Eventually, Cove turned around. <sighs> I'm gonna text Terry we, that we already know what's going on. Maybe she'll have an easier time talking to us because she won't have to pr- pretend or explain. Yeah, that might oh, be the no. only way to. What? Co- what did he say? No. He said that he wants to tell Terry what Miranda told her about her side. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, that might no, be the way. No, it's not I'm... a good idea. Why? You should he- because I feel like that's not um What? I don't, I don't want- get it. Okay. If a friend if you have a problem with a friend, you can't you do one- that Miranda didn't say it was alright to admit she talked to us. You felt way too overwhelmed to know what to say next. You think you're pushing too much. That's not a good idea, Cove, not at all. What did I why are you so fixated on this? I don't know. I said just to tell them. Like I, I don't want. The, the thing is, I don't want to tell her that Miranda talked to us because she was having a problem. Because I, 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 I think I, it's I, to I would the say point. I would say that uh, Miranda was looking for you and and something happened between you. She yeah. told us what was going on, but I don't want to tell her what she sa- had to say I don't until know. we I get was, Terry's uh, t- side of the story. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know. I think it's just uh, you know, it's just she told us what's wrong, and then you know, we're just here to mediate. I just thought it but, would like make, the thing is I don't like, want to well, tell her like everything uh, until like I can't even hear myself. I don't want to s- say I don't um, know I just don't want to say anything to the, me. I just want to say I want them to. I'm very upfront about it. Is like Miranda told us this, so I just want to hear your story. You just tell us what what actually went wrong. A, you know? But like saying it on text is not a good idea. On text? Oh, on I text is not a good it. idea. You have to call it. Fine. Like, don't. I don't know. But I don't yeah. know. I also do it on text too. I'm on, I'm like, a friend. I don't want to say well. it on text. That's even worse. Cause like, no, I don't, don't know. do that. Just I like don't know. call. Just you I would both prefer things. to call, but I don't know. Yeah. I just do it both on both ways. It doesn't matter for me. 
different. Um, I'm gonna randomize. Was this. like like I just How telling them exactly a friend's like. So um, yeah, Miranda told me about this, and then you know whatever something. So you just tell us your story about what's happened. <laughs> oh my god, it's not a good idea, honestly. I don't know. I think it's a good idea. No, I don't think it's a it good is idea for me. <laughs> I don't know. I guess me and Kovan are on the same page. Okay, I randomize it. It's not a good idea at all. It's not a good idea. Kov's mouth turned down, and you could see the grip on his phone tighten out of the corner of your eye. You wondered if he was even aware of it. Why not? Would she want to hear that we know about that? If Terry wants to hear the story, she'd tell us herself. I don't know, I still think it's a good idea to tell her. But what if she doesn't? Then we respect her privacy, that's what. You have to stop whatever this is. Cove's eyes narrowed into a short silk, a look that was almost unheard of for him to be to direct at you. His tone of voice was equally cutting. Is that what you want? For us to start fighting too? Yeah, I know, seriously. <laughs> no, Cove. Oh my god. <laughs> if that's what's happening, you can't just blame me for it. That's not what I want, but that doesn't mean it isn't what's happening. No. You could only look back at him. You were sad, not angry. We both need to calm down. It's not worth it. Go home, Cove. Oh god. Uh, well, honestly, I think this is not a big deal. We should just, you know, talk to each other, be direct, no uh walk around the bush and stuff. You know. Uh I don't know. Is this like no, what about okay, so what are you what are you thinking about this decision right now? For... You know, I'm on Cove's side. I was like, why not tell her? And like, then we're fighting about know. it it's because like, it's not, I think I don't, it's personally I don't a, think it's a good idea to tell talk to someone about something you already know because they might no, say yeah, something. Yeah, but you back. already know though. It's just that you have to tell yeah, them that you already like, know yeah. what happened though. <laughs> but what if that, they try know. Yeah, but the thing is what if a person tries to um say that what they say is wrong and and like, you know, try I'm, to rephrase it and then now you what do you do you know yeah, but i don't know i think it's not really a big deal though you just tell them up front that's it it's I not don't usually it's, do I that don't i don't do I don't that. know i just i, always uh, ask I, the per I don't know it's just that i feel like um it's just it's more easy it's just like explaining things for too long and then you just lose them in the explanation and they just take it the wrong way and i just think that you just tell them what you mean or whatever I don't know, it's just that uh, dancing uh, around this situation is too um, time-consuming, you know, a I waste of time. I'm not that upfront about things, especially when it's like personal stuff and like, no. Uh, yeah. yeah. Anyways, um, I feel like we need to both calm down because it's not <laughs> worth it. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. We both need yeah, to calm down. I it's think really it's not, not worth it. it. It's not worth That's it. That's mostly it. For several seconds, you stared back at each other. Slowly, you relaxed at some of the tensions on your shoulder. The last thing I want is another fight. God, this his face when he's angry is kind of sad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like it's upsetting. I'm like, Cole, Honestly, it makes sense. <laughs> For a moment, Cove closed his eyes and oh, took wait. a deep breath. A little bit of what? Oh wait, whoopsies. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> uh. For a moment, Cove closed his eyes and took a deep breath. A bit of tension on his shoulders released. Sorry. I'm sorry for making things difficult. You offered him a small, reassuring smile. He pulled his phone away to try to make amends. Um. Do you still want to wait together? See if they try to talk to either of us again? Of course. I don't want you to leave unless you want to. A silence stretched in, a, in what felt like hours, but it most like it wasn't that long before there was a knock at your bedroom door and mom peeked in. Just wanted to check in on you. Oh, Cove, when did you get here? When you saw your m m rose expression, she opened the door all the way and the question was dropped. Mom was standing there as well as she slipped past her wife and to come inside your space. Everything okay? What's with the long faces? Are you both okay? We're okay. Her body language could not have attracted more attracted you more strongly and you knew it you can lift your eyes off the floor as the thought of the thought of a weight of your worry was dragging in your head down Miranda called earlier she and terry are fighting but none of us know what's going on with terry 
Your parents exchanged a meaningful look, though it was me, though its meaning was lost on you. I am so sorry. I'm sorry to hear that there's trouble with your friend, sweetie. Is there anything in we can do to help? Although the corner of your eye, you saw Ko rub his arm awkwardly, unable to add anything. No, we're just waiting to see if Terry calls or texts, or if Miranda does. Well, at least, well, we can at least help you take your mind off things while you're waiting. Yeah. Another great idea, Lani. We can get the whole gang together for some quality time. Yes, it'll be wonderful. I'll go see what this is up to right now. As excited she fussed fluttered a few steps away and then stopped. She pivoted on her heels and raised a fing single finger, flashing a big smile at Ko. It's no trouble. And of course, Cliff will be welcome too. Knowing your friend was always there for you, that you couldn't be underestimated. In fact, it meant everything to you that your moms cared so much. Thanks, mom. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, thanks. That's nice of you. You're welcome. You're both very welcome. Don't sweat it. Not so, kiddos. Leave things to us. Just relax, and we'll call you when it's all when it's all together. You know, and your mom's dispersed for now, springing into action for their impromptu get together. You flop down on your bed, feeling like you could sink ink into it and disappear. Cove, meanwhile, took a spot off the chair off to the side. He sighed at the same time, and Cove's mouth pulled into a bent smile at that. He gave his phone another quick check. His eyebrows furrowed. Still nothing? <sighs> yep, this is crap, huh? Yep. Cove chewed the inside of his cheek as if to mimic the stress that he was clearly eating, clearly eating away at him. Cove, what's wrong? What's really wrong? One disagreement doesn't make you act like this. That got a point pause in his movement. Cove was carefully trying to put out his thoughts together. He spoke in a fragile voice. When people you care about, when they're unhappy with each other, there's nothing you can do. At least when you're in a fight yourself, you have some responsibility, some control over it. I wish... So... I wish it didn't have to happen, but that is impossible. So, well, oh well, I, I guess. Yeah, that's how I think too, I guess. Yeah. His attempt at giving a nonchalant shrug after that was pitiful. Yeah, it makes me feel horrible too. True, but you're right that it can't be helped. It's whatever. Other people can do what they want, right? You stayed silent. Yeah, it's whatever. Like people can do what they want. Right? Yeah, same. Yeah. There was an edge of your, to your tone you couldn't quite help as the strain it all it'll stretch you out again. Your fists clench and your whole body seemed to tense up with them. Cove's eyes fell to the floor. You let out a long sigh, trying to let out a frustrating to ease out with you. There was a question you had to ask. Is it because of what happened with your parents? Cove ran a hand through his hair, a strange smell spreading across his lips for him. His pain struck close to his heart. Just as quickly as it came, his smile was gone, lost in the mist of his farewell gaze. Yeah, you got it. It's like my parents. Despite knowing him for so many years, Cove had never spoken about Mokin of the years before he moved to Santa Bird, before his parents separated in any detail. He whispered his thoughts distantly, almost unconcerned with whatever, whenever you could hear him or not. That's... They used to fight all the time. I I think they got along when I was a baby, but uh, I, mean, I mean, they have to have wanted to be with each other at some point, but that's but when I was old enough to remember anything, it was really bad. There was always something wrong and and all I could I could never and I could never help. I just wanted them to be happy. You tried to imagine your mom speaking up. The very idea scared you, but Cove had endured that for real. I'm sorry. Sheena. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Despite the revelation, Cove gains reassured ringly at you. It's not like that anymore. Things are di so different now. I don't really, e really think about it. Again, the sorrow res resorted itself. When he continued, you could barely hear him. Though, I guess it's pretty obvious. I haven't forgotten either. You tried to smile for him. You crossed the room and took his hand. You were over... You went over and placed a hand on his shoulder. You hugged him. You kissed him. Hmm. You hold his hand. I feel like we hug him. Uh, 
Yeah, I guess so. Just hug him. Because kissing oh, yeah. him is a kind of weird, but like... Yeah, I know. Yeah. Just hug him. Just hug him. Or whatever. Just Or just hold his hand. That's, like, simple. Yeah, yeah hug him or something. You cross the room, picking up a little a low speed. Cub's eyes widened. He shot out of his chair and stood waiting for you with a non plaus look. You collided into him, wrapping your your arms around his his middle and knocking in air out of his lungs. All the mystery was gone. Cove squealed. Oh. Squeaked. Oh. Squeaked. He returned the gesture longingly. Exhaling, you pressed your cheek into his warm into the warmth of his chest. The tension was stuck inside of you. You released like a river flowing into the ocean. That was Cove. The firmness of his hug told you Cove didn't plan on letting go anytime soon. You both needed the comfort and the closeness just for just a little a little bit longer. When he finally did, he kept hold of your hand. The two of you took a seat again, this time side by side on your bed. I well That was a lot, huh? Today was a lot. Today yeah. was Yeah, it was. You sat there contentedly, you leaned against him, you caressed his head. Leaned against him, I guess. Yeah, we leaned against him. Yeah. Resting the side of your head onto his shoulder, you glance up at his face. Cove watched you affectionately. In that gentle gaze, you finally let felt like everything was going to be okay. No matter what happens, we can make it work. His mouth pulled into a bent smile at that. You chuckled, resting your head comfortably back on your shoulder. Me too. I think so too. He can sit it still anymore. Kofli and Dudley pressed his lips on lips on your forehead as he and he raised one on free hand to lightly touch your jaw. The breath caught on caught in your throat. When you remember to breathe, blood rushed to your face, turning your your skin a deep red. You tried not to think about how hot you were feeling because after everything that happened today, you were just grateful for that moment. For, and for a while, you stayed like that. A comfortable quiet fell between you, and the sun fell with it. The warm calm ended when Cove gasped sharply. He spawned half expanding to find him nursing an injury, but instead you find him staring straight ahead. What? Oh my god. I think my phone just vibrated. Well, you better find out if it did. Right. He patted his pockets, fumbling in panic, and he yanked the phone out. The force of the action nearly catapulted the device out of his grip entirely, but he caught it just in time. His eyes honed onto the screen. It's Terry, thank God. She said she's sorry. He looked back at you, eyes widened, and at his nurse, Terry started to fray once more. I... What should I say? I don't know. Give it a second. I need to think. Tell her to call us. Ask her what's going on. Ask if she's talking to Miranda. You climb up. Ask her what's mm. going on. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's the best. That a good answer. A good like yeah. thing to ask. Like ask her what's yeah. going on. Okay. He nodded and began typing. Cole was aware of, of this blunt words and could and words could something make others ears bristle, even though he'd never meant them to hurt. Hmm. Cole's phone buzzed near. Well, yeah, as soon as the message was sent. Uh, it's Terry again. She's talking to us. You lean in, watching the conversation unfold onto a cold screen. Right. She's going to actually call. Cove held his breath as he waited. His circle of friends had always been so small, so he managed to avoid any the stress of seeing friends fighting. You suspected he was feeling this even more keenly because... Keenly. Both. Keenly both, because this was so uncommon in friends, so... So this is so uncommon, and the friends was so, and the friends was so important to him. His phone rang. Cove jammed the answer third button. He switched the phone to speak about allowing you to participate in the conversation. Despite his immediate action, his voice lacked in the same resolve when he spoke. Hey, it was a tent, a white flag fluttering in the wind. Sheena's here too. Hey, Terry. Hey, hey, buddies. Terry's voice was very recognizable without her quick patter and energy. Are you okay? Oops, oops. No, are, go back. Are you okay? Wait, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you, are things okay? I don't know. Probably not. Cove tensed out his free hand coiling into an anxious fist. Wh what happened? You heard Terry sigh over the phone as she unburdened herself. 
pretty much i was at randy's house we decided to watch some movies like soup she was super like that and i've never seen and i've never seen but even seen before turns out there was a lot of those we watched one then another and another and we're having so much fun each one each time one finished he had another one to share with me <sighs> I didn't really think about the time. I only wanted to say yes to Randy and watch and watch her movies. He spoke wistfully, but her words were full. But her words were full of affection. It was Randy, you know. I wasn't thinking about my schedule or what time it was. Totally. Then I finally saw the time, and oh no, it was way too late. I already knew I couldn't stay. She took a deep breath. Her voice come becoming softer as she. When she resumed talking, Ugh. I was so stressed out. I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. Miranda wanted it to help. She kept coming up with ways to make things better, trying to figure out why she, why I was so upset and stuff. I was trying to answer her questions, and there were so many, but I couldn't really answer all of them. I didn't in, even know why some of her ideas didn't work for me. It made my headache. I still. I, I still had the first problem and Randy and Randy there trying to help blasting all these questions and suggestions at me faster than I could even think. She gulped up audibly sniffling. I got frustrated and told her just leave me alone. But then she wanted to talk about why I wanted that and and we started having a fight in the kitchen. It wrote Randy's dad up. Mm -hmm. We told her about how much I wanted to go home, but my parents couldn't get me, so Mr. Ackert offered to do it. Problem solved? No, I mean, yes, kind of, but I accepted because I definitely couldn't stay then, not after throwing a racket and turning it into a big deal. But I feel awful and embarrassed. Why did I yell at Randy and hurt her feelings? And I made her dad lose sleep by walk waking him him up and having to drive me home what do you say after that i have no idea i don't know where to start and i don't want to make it worse by saying the wrong thing and fighting again <sighs> so i'm not talking Ter terry randy isn't mad at you that you didn't want to say or that you fought she just wants you to feel like you can talk to her i mean you can say whatever you want she'll listen not talking to her at all is pretty much the only wrong way to go about it Terry relented mournfully on the other end of the line, but he had a point. Unless she faced Randy again, there would no, there would be no resolve. He looked like a hunch over his phone, stared apparently into it, and then searching for a solution. This couldn't be solved without the other key party missing. But what if you brought them in? Your phone was still free. Ye you suggest calling up Miranda now. You rang whatever without saying a word. Uh, just suggest I just ring her. it now. <laughs> I would just suggest calling her yeah, without it because it's. I would yeah. just do it, but yeah, I would just. I suggest we just call her, just like. Yeah, yeah suggest. I suggest. mean, it's both the same to me. So. I've got an idea. What if we called Miranda on my phone? Cove and I could uh, make sure your conversation didn't fall off the rails. Call Brandon. Brandon up, the concern furrow in his brow, which had taken root when Miranda first called, eased. Well. That could have worked, Terry. Are you up for it? She made a, a, a noise that wasn't a word, but nevertheless conveyed her hesitation and worry. But she brought it, it to a close decisive exhalation, as if it was pushing all the negative thoughts from her body. All right, I'll do it. Cove nodded, and now that you receive approval from everyone, you pulled out your phone and called Miranda. You led it to speaker and waited for her to pick up. Luckily, she did. Hi. Her voice was still distant as her thoughts were elsewhere, but it was loud enough for your needs. Hi, you're on speaker. Terry's on speaker too, on Cove's phone. Oh. She paused while she digested this information. You watched the phone on screen, hoping that she wouldn't hang up as a result. Really? Oh, um, really? Yep, it's really me. Can you hear my voice all the way from your house to theirs and then mine? I can. You and Cove exchanged look, waiting for the wall between them to break. I wondered who would be the one to do it. As the quiet dragged on, you caught Cove chewing his cheek. He must have waited 
you know, the same question as you, whether to encourage the conversation or leave Miranda and Terry to resolve it themselves. The answer came in forth of one sniffle and followed by another from Cove's phone. Sorry. Sorry, Randy. I, I hope you still like me. Uh, what? You were the one acting as if you didn't like me. Her tone was offensive. No doubt the result of her ones from last night was still being raw. What? What? No, no way. Everyone likes Randy. You're wonderful. Your eyes met Cove's. His phone was tilted towards you. But capturing the call indirectly, you moved your phone closer to his, hoping the signal was strong enough to convey every nuance of tone. Cove did likewise, bringing his cell next to yours, even bumping against it as she shifted his grip. I didn't even know what to say. There was no, it was the only reason I couldn't talk to you. If I had known the answer, I would have told you right away. Miranda murmured on the other end of the line. You didn't want to stay. Anything I tried to do bothered you, and you could have told me you didn't know. Yeah, I think I was angry at myself. I did a dumb thing, and I didn't want help with it. I wanted to be mad and just do with it myself. It made me keep doing the dumb things. Oh. When she spoke again, her voice was quiet, as tender and vulnerable as the words. I'm sorry. Staying up late watching stuff was all my fault. I had to find a way to fix it. That's what I thought of anyway, but I should have given you space. I'm sorry for being so pushy and sensitive. Hardly. Miranda Ackert having a flaw. I never heard such a crazy thing. Miranda let a ghost of a gill cook at his throat. Uh, maybe you could should call each other now? Sorry. Sure. Can do. Thanks for giving me the kick in the butt to, to do this already. Randy, Manny, I'm gonna call you right now. Bye, Sheena and Cove. Jing up after squeezing in another quick bye, though not giving you a room um, enough to respond to, uh, to respond in kind. Miranda laughed, the noise tickling gently in her wind chimes in the summer breeze. You're really nice. Thank you for listening and helping. I'm gonna hang up now so I can answer Terry's call. Bye. Bye. Bye, you got this. Right hung up, still chuckling softly as your call ended. The room felt empty without other voices in it. Kovacs fell the side that crashed through the newly fallen silence. He dropped his arms to the side, letting his head hang low like a puppet at rest. <sighs> Thank God. They shouldn't have involved us in that. I'm so relieved it's okay. You were simply happy your friends had made up. The day's events had drained you. You were content now that Cove seemed at ease again. Eh. I mean, uh, they shouldn't have involved us in it. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll do that. Cove scratches, scratches his face, his erection cloudy. I think we need to find better ways for dealing with conflict that was... That was off, because that was awful. We could all probably all do better at that. I think you did okay given the circumstances. Yeah, I, I think that would help. You didn't comment. Yeah, that would help. Yeah, that would help. Cove meekly smiled as he rubbed his eyes, wearing creep weariness creeping over him, and mumbled his next words. We can talk about it another day. Conflict resolution methods? Huh? Uh oh no, forget it. Your eyebrows rose and then a light bulb went off in your head. Before Miranda called, didn't you say there was something you'd wanted to say? Cove's original viz had been thrown off so it off its kilter that it was a struggle to wind up your memory back to when he first turned up. Now you did, though you remember that he had been parking when he arrived this afternoon. Was it good news? Cove brushed his hands against his now folded arm shyly. Yeah, well well yeah, maybe. I'm not sure how sure it contains counts as news or even good. It's just what it is. I'm happy about it though. Come on, no more hints. You've gotta tell me now. Go chuckle awkwardly, a hand keeping up to ruffle the hair on his back on the back of his head. Ah uh, yeah. It's fine. If you want here here I can tell you. He shifted on his feet as if a different posture had given him support he needed for the conversation. I didn't want to make it a, a big deal, but I, but I, I kind of will, not kind of, I just know what my sexuality is now. 
Oh. <laughs> a real subject change, huh? He chuckled, sure, it was unexpected, but you were excited that Cove had come to understand himself more and glad he wanted to share that with you. Ah, uh, that's great, tell me! Cove drew a breath, straightened up. I'm demisexual, so you know, most of the time I don't really have those kind of feelings of physical wants and stuff. It's only It only comes in some situations when I'm really, really emotionally and romantically connected with someone, that I start to even think about anything sexual it's only and it's only with them i hadn't heard the term until pretty recently and it just made a lot of sense once i knew what it meant i i had a word that if fit if it how i feel yeah felt. and i'm panorantic because i never really had a preference or a specific gender or anything so yeah that makes sense Co looked down at the floor, being so open to rack about the matter that personally, which which you were sure he'd spent a long time trying to figure out. You seemed to be it kind of weird for him. What? In spite of that, there was a small there was a small proud smile on his face when he looked up again, his gaze was set fast. That's really nice to hear. To know. Have I ever pushed you or made you feel uncomfortable? So does that mean you're thinking sexual things about me? You felt <laughs> proud of your boyfriend too. <laughs> The middle one. Oh. What? Oh. <laughs> I would ask the first one. I would do the middle one just to joke with him. Just uh, like, okay, hey, I want to joke. <laughs> okay. You want to? I guess. I wouldn't yeah. do that. <laughs> because I would feel uncomfortable to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not uncomfortable to do that. But I would... <laughs> okay, if you want, go for it. Go for it. Me, I'll I'll go for it. Ko flushed and frowned equally hard at the statement. He struggled to get a out a response. Yeah. What kind of thoughts? Sheena, you don't need to ask that. You weren't yes, sure. Er, <laughs> you weren't <laughs> sure that was. You weren't sure that was true, but you can help chuckling of how bashful he was. No matter what, you wouldn't get any more explicit response than that right now. The topic was dropped. All the talk of sexuality just made you reflect on your own. Wait, what? Um, your feelings on yours hadn't wavered. You viewed your view had evolved since when you were younger. I feel it like didn't change. Feelings, Did it? I feel like it would at this point, or, or say well, it's been a while. So I guess so. I guess we could just can re revamp just change it, it up maybe. a bit. Just change it up a bit. Not too yeah, much, sure. I think. Yeah. You had physical attraction in a general way. You only seem to feel physical attraction in specific cases and situations. You didn't really have a physical interest in other people. You didn't think you could tell if you had an interest in people physically. There was only one person you'd ever had those feel kinds of feelings for. Uh, I don't know. I feel it. Like, do you just want to randomize it? Yeah. Let's see where it goes. Um, how many is it? It's five. Yep, it's five. Uh, three. Three. You didn't really have a physical interest, a physical ah, interest in other people. I relate people. to that. <laughs> you had romantic attraction in a general way. You only seemed to feel romantic attraction in specific cases and situations. You didn't think you could tell if you had an interest in romantic in people romantically. There was only one person you'd ever had a romantic feelings for. There's oh, only yes. one person. I guess there's, there's no one. randomization for that. There's only one person. But, but specifically, when it came down to how you felt towards men... You found them attractive, especially your boyfriend. You weren't physically interested, but you were very happy in your romantic relationship with Cove. You generally weren't interested in guys, but there were spe special exceptions. Cove. Cove. Just Cove. Just Cove. You weren't physically interested, but you were ha very happy in your romantic relationship with Cove. And, and how you, you felt towards... Cove? Yes. Felt towards women. Ah, uh, you found them attractive. You thought you'd be happy to be with a girl someday. You found them attractive, but you hadn't thought about being with a girl. You weren't physically interested, but you'd be happy to have a romantic relationship with a girl. You weren't interested in girls. You generally weren't interested in girls, but there were special exceptions. Um, do hmm. you want to randomize this one again? Yeah, sure. Uh, that's five, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, one. One. You found them 
you found them attractive, you'd be happy with a girl when someday. Interesting. And how you felt towards NBs? I think that's what I announced it. I'm sorry if I non oh, no, non binary. You find them attractive. You thought you'd be happy to be with someone non binary someday. You find them attractive, but you hadn't thought about being with someone non binary. You weren't physically interested, but you'd be happy to be in a romantic relationship with someone non binary. You weren't interested in someone non binary. You generally weren't interested in someone who's non binary, but there were special exceptions. Uh, let's randomize it. Yep, Again. let's randomize it. See where it lands on. Um, three. You weren't physically interested, but you were happy to have a romantic relationship with someone non binary. Yep. You'd already told Cove your own sexuality in the past. You hadn't told how your feelings had changed. Yeah, let's I feel tell like him. We haven't told. Let's tell him. Let's tell him that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, now. Now, just share with her now. Oh, well, since we're talking about this already, I've already I've realized something since we talked about it back then. Yeah, I can definitely listen. I'd like to know if you want me to. You, uh, you articulate articulate. Oh, you are articulated to cope how you ex you experience attraction or romance. Kill let out a beat laughs in case he had more to say. You d you didn't, so he tilted his head likewise in a bent smile. I get it. I don't know if it makes sense to say you're like that is cool, but really, I think that that's great for you. You smile, you smile, knowing that he was doing his best to be encouraging. Of course, it's cool. Thanks for understanding, anyway. He merely smiled again. It felt good to know that the two of you could talk so easily about these matters. Cove closed his eyes. A content sigh slipped out of him as he stretched his arms overhead. You felt his tiredness deep in the narrow of your bones. It had been a trying day, now that everything was neatly wrapped up for today at least, and you had a, and you had earned a rest. You had some good talks and come out of it in not knowing not only knowing each other better, but yourself too. Hey. Hey, we should probably head downstairs to him if your moms are still wanting everyone to get together. Yeah, that's right. With that renewal step in your spring in your step, you led the way to your living to your room. Out of your room, you got downstairs to find others already assembled when waiting. Hi. Hello. Hey. Good to see you both. Hey. Hi there. What? Hi. Here we were trying to cor corral everyone into a group, but the two of you are already upstairs this whole time. Hmm. Of course we were together. You paid Chino to stick with me, or did you forget? <laughs> Cove! <laughs> he, he remembered that moment. <laughs> the steamer was meaningless to your family, who looked at each other for answers in vain. Mr. Hon, who got the message loud and clear, seemed embarrassed. He chuckled nervously, rubbing the back of his neck. Ouch, son. You always know when to remind me of that one. <laughs> uh-huh. I can't let... I can't let you live it down yet. <laughs> hmm? Can we exact? Can we hear exactly what the secret is? The suspense is killing us. Right, right. All right, all right. I'd better get everyone up to speed. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> ah, that's so funny. He held up his hands, palms up, pacifying his audience, or perhaps holding them up as a shield in advance. <laughs> The first oh, day I met Sheena, I'd been worried, worrying about Cove being alone for the summer. Well... There weren't a lot of kids around, and he wasn't exactly on the best terms with me at that time. You glanced around at your family, gawking, gawing, gauging their, res gauging gauging. their responses. I felt like this was my one shot, so I kind of offered her twenty dollars to be, be friends with Cove. And added that she couldn't tell him about it. Lizzie gaps and Mom was staring incredibly incredulously at Mr. Holden while Mom's eyebrows retreated to her hairline. You were you and Cove already knowing the story. You were the ones who only one unaffected. But after a while, I really did honestly forget it even happened. <laughs> he raised his hands higher, not level to, with his shoulders. Not a bad idea, you thought. If Mom felt inclined to throw a cushion at him, you probably managed to block it in time. <laughs> 
I know that's bad, but I've had so many grand ideas over the years, it's hard to keep track of them all. <laughs> Cope smiled, pa placing his hands on his hip and shaking his head at his father's antics. Seriously? I can't believe you, though also I totally can. Your mom's was less indulgent, the shock had ebbed away to displeasure. Mom's foot was tapping, tapping rapidly as she frowned at the next door neighbor while Mom had her arms crossed over her chest and her lips pursed. <sighs> I'm sorry, Sheena, and I'm sorry to your parents too. That was way out of bounds. Don't worry about it. Everything worked out. Your moms gave each other gave each other that look where they seemed to communicate with, with eyes alone. All right, well, that's that then, and it won't happen again. Absolutely. It definitely won't. All right. Good. <laughs> it's a little surprised that they were letting him off the hook, but on the other hand, it was a long time ago, and you're sure your moms remembered those painful early days of Cole's arrival, too. This role wasn't a potential bad influence anymore, so he, so Lecture would be in pretty mood instead your mom gave him a lean smile in that case now that's settled why don't we find something to do Delta and Grumman uh, cascaded through the group in a couple waves uh, as a suggestion Mr. Lone's shoulders slumbered a release of tension he brought his hands down tucking them away in his pockets hmm how about cards there are a murmur of interest from the others you were keen to play. This was fine with you. You'd play along with the others. You didn't really want to play cards. Uh, I would be keen to play. Yeah, I'd just be fine with it. Uh, okay, we'll go with fine with it. Most of the group was eager to play, but Mr. Ho was demurring. Nah. I think I'll sit this one out. Oh, that's a surprise. Where's the fun in that? Join in! We're not too angry with you. Yes, and I know there's a lot of people who... Oh, but we can make it work. Mr. Owen shrugged into himself, embarrassed by their attention. Dad, you love playing cards. We do it at our house all the time. Dad? Mr. Owen broke under the combined force of everyone's attention. Cove, you're an adult now. You deserve to know the truth. What? What did you do? I used to throw the card game so you could win. <laughs> I put up a good fight, but I always made sure to lose a lot more rounds than I won. <laughs> oh Oops. my god. He toyed ink with the end of his ponytail, cleared the stress at the second se great secret he's revealing today. <laughs> That's like a new one. <laughs> I know people <laughs> want to be taken seriously and fake wins don't mean as much, but I couldn't help myself <laughs> oh my god it's so much better when everyone else got the chance to be victorious Kyra knew and went along with it Kof laughed in disbelief and this was the one this was the thing his dad stressed about hiding after all the other stunts he's pulled over the years so what a lot of parents do that I hadn't guessed it sure but though looking back it made sense hmm. That's right. What's the big deal, Cliff? You can finally take the kid gloves off and give him a run for their money. Maybe even actual money in your case. Mr. Holland smiled coyly, his gaze lowering. I'm not sure that's a good idea. Yeah, why? that's not a good idea. <laughs> why? And why not? He would have sent expansively, his movement fluid and vague. It's just, actually, I'm something of a card shark. I used to make lots of fast cash off games. You casual players don't have a shot unless it's a game of pure luck. Coast's jaw, jaw hung open, his eyes fixated on his father. <laughs> That's a new one. Really? Uh. There was a, a touch of amazement, even admiration nestled along the jaw. <laughs> The other members of the clock were feeling exchanged blues, ranging from Liz's belief to mom's intrigue, and would ma somewhere in the middle between the two. You can't simply make a claim like that and expect us to go along with it. Let's see if you can back it up, Shark Man. <laughs> shark Man. Mr. Holden, <laughs> Mr. Holden gave her, her a quick smile. Her determinants became quickly replaced with confidence of someone very scared of her or very misguided. <laughs> you sure about that? Definitely. We've got to see this so-called non-casual player in action. Well, I might be able, though who knows, maybe I've gotten rusty. 
His coyness continued to rile up the gang, and he was getting a kick out of it now. Please? Come on, please. All right. All right, I can dust off the old tricks. You don't go easy on us. What? Oh, don't go easy on us. <laughs> go to that. Coop beamed at his father while mom clapped clapped hand, clapped Mr. Hold on the back. Liz, Liz started off to the deck of cards while the rest of you settled in for the game. Hands were dubbed, Mr. Holland wasted no time proving his words true, wiping the floor with all of you. You played several rounds, even switching games, but none of them were none of you were a match for him. That's how the alliance came to be forged. The rest of you joined forces against Mr. Holland only, <laughs> just trying to increase the odds of beating him. With your combined numbers, you pulled a few, out a few yet yeah, it was still a challenge, and he was clearly a professional. If these were his skills now, rusty and used, you couldn't imagine what deadly opponent he must have been in the past. Despite all that, you still had fun. Working cooperative actually fostered a sense of camaraderie with the others. Miss Owen didn't appear faced by this strategy. He actually wondered whether the increased challenge made it more interesting for him. You spent the rest of the afternoon together with your family and the Holdens having fun. It had been an interesting, in, interesting evening for sure, but many discoveries for everyone. It was freeing and yet simula uh, simultaneously. simultaneously, you felt more tied together than you had before. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> more secrets that were more revealed. More secrets were revealed, yes. Yes. That's so funny. Mm. <sighs> yeah. I do and remember him saying he was a shark person. Shark person? I don't know. <laughs> the card <laughs> shark guy. But I think yeah. he revealed it like earlier for me. Oh, for you? Yeah, for some reason. Oh, I don't remember. Mm, cool. How. <laughs> but yeah, it was funny. But yeah, um, that was a good moment. Um, I'm glad like things got good with like Miranda and Terry. Yeah. But yeah. Anyways, I, yeah. But yeah. Anyways, I guess um, uh, we learned more should... about how we. Uh, deal with problems you know, yeah you and me and <laughs> yeah i do um i do like this moment because of the reveal with cove oh yeah like his sexuality cove. and stuff oh yeah yeah it is pretty good yeah it's good i did not know that there was such thing um before um playing before playing this game but now i i like knowing in, um new things that yeah. come from this game that you wouldn't really know yeah but yeah it's pretty good yeah, and, no one. and I guess we'll close out the episode here. Oh yeah, and I'm the one who's closing, right? Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, so yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, like and whatever. Subscribe and stuff. Uh, support the game. Do that. It's on the links down below and everything. Just click them. And then yeah, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>